This is part two of the debt double header where we look at free money and infinite returns. In part one, we looked at the key differences between good and bad borrowing and how I use good debt to not only acquire buy flats for free, but how I got paid 35 grand to own them. And if you missed that video, you can check it out right here. Now in part two, we're gonna take things to the next level and I'm gonna show you how I got 250 grand for free which enabled me to buy those five flats in the first place. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna share my top five practical tips on how you can use that to make you rich in a safe and sustainable way. Do you know what my favorite type of money is? Free money! In this video, I'll show you how I got money for nothing, but unfortunately, I won't be able to show you how I got my chips for free. That's next week. Oh, come on. I'm not that old. <laughs> Kind of. It's a little harsh. Oh, you watched part one? Uh, fair enough. Borrowing for free. A lot of people think the capital appreciation or the value of your investments going up over time is what makes people rich. And it definitely does. But it's debt depreciation over time that really moves the needle. This is the secret wealth creator. Now, if you can just stay with me until the end of this video, I promise it might just change your life like it has mine. In the finance industry, if you borrow below the rate of inflation, it's considered free money because the rising cost of everything around you eats away at that debt over time. In the UK, over the last 30 years, the average rate of inflation has been 2.7%. Right now in the UK, it's currently over 6%, which exaggerates my point even more. If you have money in the savings account at 0.7% interest rate and inflation or the cost of all the goods and services are going up by 2.7% a year, you're not actually getting that 0.7%. The real returns as they're known, which factor in inflation, are actually minus 2% a year. So your cash savings are worth less and less every year. So many people are in this situation. They're saving cash and thinking they're doing a good thing financially, but over time, they're actually losing money. And remember, inflation isn't 2.7% today. In the UK, it's currently over 6%. So if your savings are getting 0.7% interest, you're actually losing 5.4% a year. But all is not lost. Thankfully, the same theory holds true for debt. Inflation destroys savings and debt over time. If you borrow a thousand pounds at 2.7% and the cost of all the goods and services are going up by 2.7% a year, the real returns are zero. You're actually borrowing that money for free. But however, if you're able to borrow at 1.7% at the same inflation rate, your real returns would be plus 1%. You'd actually be making money by borrowing money. But we're just getting started. Businesses and wealthy people invest on the real rate of returns. The average house price in the UK in 1990 was £58,000. And in January 2022, it was £274,000. That's an increase of 375% over 32 years, which averages out at 11.7% a year. Now, as always, historical data doesn't determine future results. So let's be really conservative and suggest house prices increase by 5% a year moving forward instead of 11.7%. So our house is worth £450,000. If house prices were to go up by 5% a year, our house will be worth almost 1.2 million in 20 years time. Now I mentioned in part one that we put a 250K mortgage on our house, leaving 200K left over. This leftover amount is known as equity. So we now have 250,000 pounds of debt and 200,000 pounds of equity. Now we left 200K equity in our home because the mortgage company were willing to offer us an interest only mortgage. And this is a real game changer. Unlike repayment mortgages, interest only mortgages mean you only pay the interest on what you borrow each year. And then at the end of the term, you pay back the capital that you borrowed. So in this case, we pay the 250K in 20 years time. So we pay less now, use those savings to invest in profitable assets, make as much money as possible. And then in 20 years time, we pay off the debt and let me show you how. So if our house increases by 5% a year, in 20 years time, it will be worth roughly 1.2 million. Our debt will still be at 250K, but our equity will have increased to 950K. We started with 250K debt and 200K equity. 20 years on, we still have the 250K debt on a 1.2 million pound house, leaving us with 950K equity, 750K more than we started with. Free money, car -ching. Because we've borrowed at a rate below inflation and also below the rate that the housing market rises, we've not only borrowed that money for free, but we've actually made a huge sum of money on it all tax-free. But wait, there's more. Why well, stop there when you can increase the margin of safety and make even more money on it? Making money with debt. We didn't waste that debt buying consumer items. Not cool, dude. We bought high returning property investments instead, further increasing our profitability and our margin of safety. Now that's cool, just like me. 
So for our mortgage, we're paying £379 a month, which is £4,550 a year, and over the course of 20 years is £91,000. For my profit share of the Anvil, I'm receiving £708 a month, which is £8,500 a year, or £170K over the 20 year period. Now, of course, mortgage rates will probably go up after the five year fix, but so will our rent. So I'll keep these as they are. This is one of the main reasons why I love property investing. It's inflation proof income for life. As you can see on the far right column, the difference, my share of the profits are nearly twice as much as the debt that I've committed to. And remember from part one, we got all of our original money out of the deal, including 35 grand profit on top of that, which we're now gonna move into new investments. So our aim is to continue buying more investments just like this to further increase our monthly income, which also helps our profitability and our margin of safety. This is a summary of how me and Lou are benefiting from this first property deal. The real rate on our 250K mortgage is not the 1.82% we're paying the mortgage company. It's actually benefiting us by 0.88% based at 2.7% inflation. And we're benefiting from 4.28% per year at 6.1% inflation. Either way, we're getting paid to borrow. The 35k rent we're getting paid from the Anvil is not only covering the Anvil mortgage payments and the general running costs, but it's also covering our home mortgage payments, as well as making us an additional £3,950 a year on top. The rent is covering two mortgages plus profits. The Anvil's currently worth 400k and we have a 300k mortgage on it. In 20 years time, if house prices increase by 5% a year, it should be worth around £1,061,320. Our equity will increase from 100k to 761,320 pounds. Can you guess what we're going to do with that equity? You're spot on. We're going to extend the mortgage, put it out and reinvest that into more property. Now these equity numbers are based on the house prices increasing 5% a year, not the average of 11.7% over the last 30 years. We're also not accounting for any rent increases as well as mortgage increases. And finally, remember once again, we pulled all of our original money back out plus 35 grand on top of that for us to go again and again. So now you can see why I don't like paying mortgages off early and how debt can make you rich. So what about you? What can you do to utilize debt and benefit from this secret wealth creator with little to no property investing experience? But before I share my top five tips on leveraging debt to make you rich, I gotta hit you with a disclaimer. Not financial advice, but entertainment purposes only. My top five tips for leveraging debt to make you rich. Number five, don't overextend. If you have any consumer debt like credit cards or loans above the rate of inflation, make sure you pay those off first before giving any of these other tips any further consideration. Consumer debt will make you poor. Eliminate all of it before considering this stuff. Don't overextend your borrowing. Always make sure that you can comfortably afford the repayments with plenty of wiggle room and don't max out your borrowing just because you can. Me and Lou put a 250 grand mortgage on our house, leaving 200,000 pounds equity in our home. Our combined monthly income dwarfs the 379 pound commitment we've made so we don't lose any sleep over debt. Don't fear debt, respect it. Start small and go slow. Don't overextend yourself. Tip number four, don't pay off your mortgage early. Let inflation and the increase in house prices destroy your debt over time. If you've already paid your mortgage off or your fixed term is about to expire, speak to a mortgage broker about your borrowing options. Can you increase your mortgage and comfortably afford the repayments? Or can you get an interest only mortgage? When you extend your mortgage, you get tax-free cash in your account. That money is not for spending. It's 100% used for investing. Don't ever, ever borrow money for consumer spending. It will ruin you. Not cool, dude. Tip number three, don't borrow money for stocks or crypto. I only borrow money to invest in property. You can't control the price movements of stocks and crypto and they're far more volatile than property. If their value drops significantly, you could be liquidated and have your assets taken off you. You could lose everything. In property, the valuations are far more stable and you have the control to add value to the asset. So you could boost the price back up. Tip number two, start at home. Now I've spent over 30,000 pounds in property investing training over the last two years. And when people ask me for property investing advice, I always recommend that they start with their own home. And here's why. You get cheaper mortgage rates. All the profits are tax-free and there's far less hassle to deal with. Now, if you're able to increase your mortgage and get some tax-free cash, I recommend utilizing it in one of the following ways. So you can update the kitchen, bathrooms, and living room. These rooms are the most important. Even like refurbs like paint and carpet can do wonders. Try extending your house to the side, to the back, 
or go up if you can. Maximize as many opportunities as you can. Think about how you can increase the floor space. Can you convert the garage into a room? Or can you increase the number of bedrooms? These can all increase the valuation of your property. Don't just rely on the market to boost the price of your home. Take control and make it more valuable. Now this strategy is overlooked by many because it's so simple. But if you just literally buy your home, add significant value to it by doing all the things that I mentioned a moment ago, you sell it and repeat that process two to four times, you're gonna end up with a massive amount of profit which you can use for investing. And my number one tip for leveraging debt to make you rich is rent a room or part of your home. I still think this is one of the most simple, overlooked and effective money-making strategies available right now. At the time of filming in the UK, you can rent out part of your home or a room for seven and a half thousand pounds a year tax-free. So that's 625 pounds a month you don't have to declare to HMRC. Could you use debt to create a space to rent out? A friend of mine recently told me about a garage they converted. It cost them 30,000 pounds to turn it into a self-contained room. It has a kitchen and bathroom, it has everything. Now I got really excited and said, why don't you just jump on Airbnb? You can make thousands of pounds a month doing that. But with their job, they just didn't have the time, which is fair enough. I said I knew hundreds of investors that would love to use that space for Airbnb. She could get fixed guaranteed rent every single month and she wouldn't have to do anything. It was just pure passive income. So I passed the opportunity on to one of my friends and they agreed to pay her 600 pounds a month to use the room. So for a 30,000 pound conversion cost, she was able to receive 7,200 pounds annual income. That's a return on investment of 24%. That's an awesome return. Now, if you remortgaged your home to get the 30,000 pounds at say 2%, that would cost 600 pounds in interest a year and you'd still get a 22% ROI. Inflation would not only eat away at the debt over time, but you'd actually cover the annual interest payment in one month's rent. Now that's cool debt. I hope this two-part series has inspired you to look at debt differently. So next time you think about overpaying your mortgage or remortgaging your house in general, give some thought to your available options and the strategies I've shared in this video. It could totally transform your wealth and your life like it has mine. If you found this useful, like the video and share your thoughts in the comments below. So which ideas intrigue you the most? Do you have any experience leveraging debt to make you wealthy? And am I really that old? If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this one here, where I'll show you how you can retire in seven years or four years like me. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one.